wherever you are, dear listener, welcome to this edition of New Life coming to you from Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. I'm your host, Tileno Diam. Some of us have bones that are very much fragile and are likely to fracture when hit by something, therefore making him or her not to be able to walk again. Usually, the bone loses density due to lack of enough calcium in the body. This mainly occurs especially in women. We will get to hear the lovely voice of Musavi Muteshi to educate us more on the ailment known as osteoporosis. Steve Rundu will also come in with the topic on stewarding your inheritance. We also have more entertaining items in store for you. Keep it locked to Adventist World Radio. For still keeping me company. Let us now give way to Musavi Muteshi to educate us about osteoporosis. Enjoy. Hello, listener. Welcome to our program, Health Nuggets. I am your presenter, Musavi Muteshi. Today, I want to talk with you about what is worldwide the most common bone disease, osteoporosis, or a weakening of our bones. We tend to think of our bones as strong, solid structures that are unchanging. They support us as we move about because calcium makes them strong. We think of them as growing and strengthening in childhood and then weakening becoming subject to breaking in our old age. In fact, bones are living tissues that are very dynamic. Calcium is constantly being added to and removed from our bones by a delicate balance involving the level of calcium in our blood, the level of vitamin D, and the level of a hormone called parathyroid. It is what our bones need calcium is obvious. It is a substance that makes them hard and strong. 
Vitamin D performs several key functions related to bone formation. In our intestine, it increases the amount of calcium we can extract from the foods we eat. It also forces our kidneys to keep the calcium that is already in the blood. Finally, it releases parathyroid hormone, which transfers calcium out of our bones back into the bloodstream if our calcium level becomes too low. The balance of these three factors determines just how hard our bones are. Bone weakening occurs if our body fails to form enough new bone or if too much calcium is removed from our bones. Normally, when we are young, our bodies use calcium to make our bones strong as we grow. In the unfortunate event that our diet is poor and we don't eat enough calcium, bone production suffers, leaving our bones weak even in childhood. Most often, our bones form normally when we were young. Then, as we age, if calcium is removed from our bones faster than new bone can be formed, our bones weaken. The bones become thin and fragile, putting them at risk of breaking even without significant injury. Osteoporosis affects both men and women of all races. Worldwide, the lifetime risk of breaking a bone because of weakening is 30 to 50 percent in women and 15 to 30 percent in men. The underlying causes of the weakening are a drop in the level of female sex hormone in women at the time of menopause and a drop of male sex hormone in older men. Other factors include being confined to bed because our body doesn't require our bones to bear so much weight. Chronic diseases such as arthritis can make it too painful to be active and the inactivity allows our bones to weaken. Some chronic kidney diseases result in kidneys that cannot protect the calcium in our blood. That calcium loss is replaced by removing calcium from our bones, weakening them. Additionally, taking some types of medicines such as steroids causes our bones to weaken and drinking large amounts of alcohol lowers the body's ability to absorb calcium. Smoking tobacco contributes to bone weakening for reasons that are not well understood. There are no early symptoms as bones weaken. The loss of calcium from bone occurs slowly over many years. When symptoms occur late in the disease, they include bone pain as the bone breaks with little or no trauma. We may develop low back pain as the bones of our lower spine crumble. We may become shorter over time and we may develop a stooped posture. Many times people break a bone before they're even aware their bones are weakening. By the time a break occurs, the disease is in its advanced stages and damage is severe. The goals of osteoporosis treatment are to control the pain, to stop further bone weakening and to prevent falls and other trauma that could cause bones to break. Taking medicines, paying attention to your diet and making changes in your lifestyle can all help in these efforts. We will look at these treatment methods one at a time. Your doctor may prescribe a medicine that can actually slow the rate of bone loss and relieve your bone pain. It can help prevent bones from breaking, but bones that have already crumbled cannot be healed. Paying attention to our diet requires that we eat a healthy, well-balanced diet that contains adequate levels of calcium and vitamin D. Good sources of calcium include dairy foods such as milk, cheese and yogurt, dark green leafy vegetables such as spinach and collard greens, oranges and soybean products such as tofu and tempeh. Vitamin D is found in sunlight, so you may already get enough vitamin D by being outdoors if you live in a sunny climate. If the hours of sunlight are limited where you live or if you spend most of your time indoors, you may need extra vitamin D. Fish oil is high in vitamin D and dairy foods often have vitamin D added to them. Making lifestyle changes will help you to reduce your risk of breaking your bones, even if they are already weakened. These changes include getting regular exercises. Walking or jogging regularly is usually sufficient. Avoid exercises that present a risk of falling or of trauma to your bones. People who spend a lot of time sitting or lying in bed 
are at a high risk of their bones weakening and breaking, so exercise regularly. Also, stop unhealthy habits such as smoking and drinking alcohol. Smoking allows your bones to weaken and too much alcohol will limit the amount of calcium you can absorb from your food. It also puts you at risk for falling. People with osteoporosis can become severely ill and disabled, but it does not affect their life expectancy. It is one of the major reasons why people are admitted to nursing homes. About half of the people who suffer hip fractures become unable to walk independently. Health Nuggets is written by Dr. Richard Uckel, a medical doctor working in the United States. The medical views expressed in this program are his and may differ for your particular health needs. If you need medical advice, please consult a medical professional in your area. Thank you for listening. We are always happy and privileged to get your views, comments, and suggestions about this program. Continue doing so, and if you haven't started sending, you can start today by writing to the producer, Adventist World Radio, PR Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org. Savior is bleeding in glory, our dear loving Savior, no our friends we fear, and now he is watching in tenderness for me, but all oh, that my Savior was your Savior too, for you I am praying for you.
Thank you for staying tuned to the Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. I'm your host, Tileno Diambo. How should one be able to steward his or her inheritance? Let us find out more from Steve Rundu as he talks to us about stewarding our inheritance. Stewarding your inheritance. Our key text this day comes from the book of Joshua, reading from chapter 13 all through to chapter 19. God instructs Joshua to provide, to divide up the land and apportion inheritance to the various tribes. One precondition, faithful living on the part of the recipients, applies for the arrangements to be long term. In our own lives, the issue of inheritance is an important consideration of financial stewardship. No matter what our age or state of health, having a will and planning out what happens to our estate, large or small, are important principles to be dealt with now. I suggest that teaching children at a young age how to handle money as well as including the principles of limited resources, delayed gratification and a strong work ethic is important. How much money should I give my children? Is giving money to my children good stewardship? Do my children have the wisdom to handle an inheritance? Giving money may not be wrong, but is it wise? Do my children or grandchildren have any special needs? When when should I give money to my children and what should I give my children? In addition, Blue considers six critical decisions which respect to giving through a will. He says, How much do I leave my children? How do I leave my assets to my children? How much do I want to leave to other family and friends? How much do I want to leave to charity? How do I want to leave my assets to charity? How much do I want to pass to pay in taxes? Other important determinations related to creating a will may include appointing an executor or personal representative, specifying guardians for minor children, and if you plan to establish a trust, identifying the trustees. Another idea is that of including in your will a testimony for posterity. The following is a short excerpt from this author's discussion of estate planning. I quote, Unless you plan the distribution of your estate, the government will. Very rarely does the government have the same objectives for your estate as you do. Additionally, if proper planning has not been done, the final expenses can siphon off up to 70% of an estate. These expenses are for probating the will, estate taxes, inheritance taxes, attorney's fees, accountant's fees, and funeral expenses. What can you do to give your children attitudes and tools to make their financial lives successful? Walk through the questions from Ron Blue. Discuss them with your spouse and attorney or any other relative party. What next steps do you need to make to take related to this issue? Let us pray. God, You are concerned with the inheritance of the Israelites, and I believe you are concerned with mine too. I am so thankful that you care about me as an individual. Help me to be loving and wise as I plan for the future, even for my inheritance. I pray all these things, trusting and believing in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Great having your company. Thank you for listening to the Voice of Hope. Remember to send in your views, comments, and suggestions to the producer, Adventist World Radio, PO Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org. On behalf of our producer and the entire New Life production team, I have been your presenter. Chileno Diam.
For you, for you. 